Okay, let's go ahead and drive, ride this ride. <laughs> Make sure this is on properly. All right, we're about to go down um, from the uh, mountains above Palm Springs. We're going to drop down from the mountains into the low desert. Here we go. I stopped to take a look at the over the edge over there. It's quite beautiful. And we're ready to go. Here we go. Should be pretty. It's cold. And we'll do the good life meditation as we go. Hey there, my name's Kurt. And uh, the good life is my personal creed, my uh, seven life objectives and 30 principles. These are the things that I've collected over the last, well, see, I'm almost 58. That long. <laughs> Although I didn't really start this in earnest until I was uh, in midway through my 40s. And I uh, do this to help me live a good life. Because, um, I don't believe in God. So, if I don't have a God to guide me, and I don't have a, a Ten Commandments to, sh to uh, use as signposts, or, and if uh, I don't believe in an afterlife, I don't believe we have a soul, and I don't believe that there's any afterlife, and I don't think that right and wrong are objective out there in the universe beyond us. I think if uh, human beings didn't exist, then the things that we uh, conceive of as right and wrong would uh, no longer be. Right and wrong, good and bad are uh, constructs that we hold in our mind as a result of uh, the types of creatures that we are and what makes sense in terms of uh, the universe that we live in. So, with all that said, I needed to figure out some way that I can have something that I can use to make sense of the world and to determine if I'm on the right track or if I'm, if I'm lost and confused. Basically, a moral, a compass of some sort, a moral compass. And maybe ethics is the right, is the better word. Where ethics would be, you know, as Aristotle might define ethics, is the, he would call it the ethical principle. The, I like to describe what Aristotle says, is, is, is the value add that we add to our reactions to the world, where we have our, our emotions. And there's Palm Springs down there, way down there. That's where we're headed. We have our emotions, and I have to watch out there, give me some hell, heck, heck, winds up here. We have our emotions, which are just how we respond to the world, and those go, you know, happiness, sadness, anger, frustration, all, oh, you know, everything. You know, the good ones and the bad ones. And then our, Aristotle would say our faculties, the, the way that we can respond, you know, our, our nature, whether we're a, a man or a woman, a few words, or we wear our hearts on our sleeves, whatever, that's our, that's just kind of the way we are. And then our, and, and that's just, you know, our Aristotle would say that those those are involuntary. That's just kind of the way we are, the way we're made up. We can exercise some control over it to a degree, but but to a lesser degree. <laughs> and then we have what Aristotle would call the moral principles, which are the things that we add, the the way that we take our emotions and we transform them into reasonable activities and responses, or we let them fly off the handle. You know, our, our degree of self-control and how we, how we use our, interact, how we interact with the world and how to, especially how we use our emotions to further the ends that we believe are good and or move away from those that we do not. So that's what I wanted to do, was develop some principles that would help me to do that. Although when I first set out to do this, I wasn't familiar with Aristotle's framework there. But um, in hindsight, I see, I see how it fits. So here we go. And I always begin this by looking at yesterday and last night and asking myself how I did in terms of applying my principles. And for the most part, I did good. It was a, Yesterday was a work day and I had a solid day of work. 
I walked the dogs. I had a nice dinner with my family. Um, was there anything that challenged me? I thought there was. No, that was just a while ago. That was today. That was earlier. Someone, uh, someone um, almost ran. They pulled out right in front of me on the on the road. But that's neither here nor there. That one didn't. I, I did keep my cool, and I, I did slow. I did slow down. I gave them a, a stern a stern look. <laughs> But I didn't fly off the handle or anything like that. So that, that, that was today, though. Okay, so let's let's go over. Oh, and I slept pretty good last night, although I was up a little bit early in the uh, morning. Um, just you know, couldn't sleep from about mm, three o'clock. Whoa, what's this? Let's do it. Oh, I thought I thought he was on the road, and it wasn't because I had uh, anything on my mind in particular. It just you know, just kind of woke up. Happens sometimes more and more as I get older. Wow, look at that. Quite an expansive desert down there, huh? Hey there. Hi. Okay, here we go. The good life meditation. Uh, first, my seven objectives. The first of these is to be always ready to die, to have my affairs in order, my relationships in good state. And then my um, my my art, whatever it is I want to work on in life, in good state as well. And I, I believe I do. I, I you know my finances are as good as I could hope them to be. They're they're better. I mean they're the best of they've been in my life, except for that brief period of time when I was rich. But in terms of you know steady income, solid employment, um, you know good good savings for retirement, and all that stuff's in good place. So yeah, um, the other one is uh, my relationships. I yeah, I think I'm good good relationships with just about everybody. And then there's good. Well, the only the only problematic one really is my mom. But I think that that's as good as it's going to get. So yeah, and then my art. My well, my book going alone is is done. I really think it's done done. I think there may be a little bit of touching editing here and there. Oh, look at this sign. Mountain goats, mountain sheep. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, I'm ready to die. I don't want to die, but uh, <laughs> I'm ready if it does happen. If a mountain sheep comes up and butts me off the edge of this cliff. For number uh, two, the second objective is to uh, make good and effective use of time. Well, look at this view. <laughs> That's Palm Springs and Palm Desert down there. Wow, it's a pretty sheer, well it's not a sheer drop, but it's a, I think that the word is escarpment. No, is that right? Yeah. There's the vertical drop. I should be able to see the Salton Sea back there, maybe. That's where I'm headed. Make good and effective use of time not waste my time. People crossing? Oh, the Vista Point, that's why. Effective insofar as, not just good use of time, but effective, so that I'm actually making forward progress, you know, towards my objectives and principles, you know, making the world a better place in some way. Let's just stop for a second here. Making the world a better place in some way. In objective ways. <laughs> in. I can unplug myself. <laughs> Good and effective use of time. Not wasting time. <laughs> but using time well. Number three is the development and maintenance of good and sound life principles. These are the seven objectives and the 30 principles that I'm talking about now. After that comes the cultivation of good emotional reactions. Just reacting well to uh, the world around me. Like today when that uh, car pulled out in front of me. I had to slam on the brakes and I mean they really were coming out. And I responded physically. I responded uh, to, to move, th to slow the bike down to avoid a collision. But I didn't 
respond. I, I showed anger, but I, w I didn't, uh, you know, let it top out. I didn't blow it up or anything. The next is the uh, performance of good actions. Just to do good things throughout the day. Next is the uh, recognition of true limits and true opportunities. And then now, uh, one thing slowly, the last objective. Just to do one thing at a time through my life and to do that thing slowly and deliberately. Now my uh, 30 principles. The first of these is the principle of war. To always be at war with everything that I believe is true. To make, be making an effort to discover where I'm wrong and to correct those mistakes. Number two is the um, principle of reason. To use reason as the instrument of that war. And the sub-principles of uh, honesty, objectivity, and doubt. Next is um, the principle of uh, the homunculus, the concept of a, a little man or a woman residing in my mind. It's a substitute for a soul. Remember, I, I don't think that we have a soul or any afterlife, that there's any afterlife. So this consciousness that, that I am uh, is going to die with me. And I remind myself of that by remembering that the homunculus is, a is this consciousness that's trapped inside me. Welcome to Scenic Highway 74. In this place of solitude and beauty, please take a little time to show respect. Please take time to show respect for both the natural surroundings and those who share this highway. Okay, so just asking us to drive safely and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Look at that wilderness back there. After the homunculus comes the principle called the anchor hold which is just my reminder that uh, I'm trapped, <laughs> and so are you. Like on a little piece of rock sticking out of a, a sea. And uh, rocks sticking out of the sea. And uh, so are you. And so, but we'll never, we can never really touch one another. In, f in fact, all we can do is, you know, gesticulate and shout across the waves. And one day the, the ocean will swallow us and we'll be gone. <laughs> Next is uh, the principle of purpose. <laughs> and my purpi are to, uh, I, I, the three sub-principles are biology, virtue and mission, where biology is the uh, becoming a father, in my case, but being a, being a parent, getting, getting our genes into the next generation and, and raising those children successfully to uh, adulthood, they carry on. Virtue is the uh, efforts to make the world a better place in objective, meaningful ways. And then uh, purpose is whatever purpose we have for ourselves. We choose for ourselves, in fact. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Biology, virtue, and mission. Okay, next comes uh, the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces flowing and changing and forever transforming, including us. After the atomic principle, comes the principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature. It's good to recognize what that is. and. Uh, 
so that we can uh, deal better with the world in a more realistic and uh, actual manner. And, uh, boy, I'm kind of losing myself in kind of a meditative state. Let's stop looking over the uh, cliff like that, or the, over the, the that, that vista. Kind of did something to me. It kind of, kind of like, it's like, 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 whispering into the, into the beast's ear. Soothing the savageness. <laughs> Whatever savageness was in me. Okay, so carrying on the principle of nature, we talked about that, and then, and then the, prince, the next principle is the pirate ride. The idea that uh, uh, free will is an illusion. After that comes uh, the principle of maturity, and the sub principles of wisdom and fortitude. We are mature when we are wise in remembering our successes and failures, and strong in pursuing uh, success and avoiding uh, things that are lead to failure <laughs> and now uh, next is um, the social principle we are social creatures we need one another to survive and our best ends are social ends we do definitely do better with one another We're, our biology is uh, seems to want that next comes the principle of public speaking, a reminder to use few words, carefully chosen words, uh, well understood words, and to never gossip. And to the sub-principle there is felicity, which is cultivating an ability to, to accurately convey our meaning to language. It's kind of an art, the art of felicity. A nice long windy turn here. Next comes, uh, after public speaking comes, is it temperance? I think so. Temperance in the sub-principles of suffering, simplicity, and apathy. Whereas temperance is our controlled consumption of, of everything. Work and play and food and drink and sex and all kinds of stuff. And the, we naturally suffer when we deny ourselves what we want. And such a life is a simple life. So if we pursue a simple life, we are almost, by definition, creating a temperate life. And then apathy is our ability to recognize, is, is, the, is the, what we apply when we recognize something is out of our control, and we, we remain apathetic to it. Like I'm apathetic to the cold right now. It's outside of my control. I just kind of push on through. It's what, it's what makes the Stoics stoic. <laughs> probably at the heart of that, that quality of their, that they have. Next comes the, the, the next principle is the um, horror show. Life is a horror show unfolding before us, just chock full of terrible things happening. I don't like to dwell on that, but I do like to remember that and remind myself that every day, of that every day, so that I don't take, take so that I don't forget. And so that I, 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 that drives me to take efforts to do what I can to alleviate that suffering in some ways. Next comes uh, a principle called that which must be born. That's just simply a reminder that uh, there are certain things that we have to carry in our lives you can't get around. You know, like for example the choice to become a father means that I'm going to support my family which sometimes means that I have to do a job that I might not necessarily like. <laughs> other things um, that's that's what I have to bear because that's the, the choice that I took and some, sometimes it's not a matter of choice it's just a matter of what happens right keep that uh, keep that hand on the rudder steering the steering the ship through the storm in the direction of uh, in the direction that we know is best that we think is best hmm. after that comes Uh, the Feast of Oval, which is uh, what happens when we get fed up and we decide we're going to let the world know about it, we're fed up. We spew it all out, which doesn't do anybody any good. It just relie alleviates our emotions at the expense of our well-being and uh, contaminates others around us. So I try to avoid being like that 
And when others are behaving that way around me, I try to avoid consuming it. It's a tricky thing to do, but with a little practice, it actually uh, becomes second nature. Next comes uh, distraction. We distract ourselves throughout life with work and our hobbies and our family and you know, gossip and all this stuff. And we do that so that for a lot of reasons. One is to just keep ourselves occupied. But two, and I think the most significant reason, is so that we don't have to uh, recognize that God doesn't exist. Because if, uh, if, if we actually really focus on it and sit and gaze out at the universe, it becomes quite apparent that, uh, that uh, there's nothing out there. There's just us and the other life forms on this planet. Any uh, other claims that there's more uh, usually devolve to faith, which is, to, which is no good ration, rationale for any belief. Because we can believe anything on faith, anything at all, which means that nothing can be trusted that's believed on faith. So this comes after the f uh, that comes the best seat in the house which is right here, right now, doing what we're doing. This is the best seat. After the best seat in the house comes uh, the path of wildness, which is the way forward and through into new life. And it comes about when we, uh, we decide we want to make a change. We give ourselves some time to, to collect facts and think about it. We cogitate over those facts and then ultimately we make a decision. And sometimes, we know sometimes that that decision might not be the right decision, but uh, we take that risk. <laughs> we go for it. After the path of wildness comes the risk of avoiding risk. There are uh, two layers of risks in life. The shallow layer, which is the stuff that uh, we all think we're supposed to do by virtue of how we're raised, which is we get a family, or we get an education, get a job, find a spouse, buy a house, make a family, maybe not in that, these particular orders, save for retirement, etc., etc. And then there's the deep level risk, which is, you know, doing something with our life that we want to, you know, finding ourselves, so to speak. Um, and it's a tricky thing to do both. Usually we get one or the other. It's a rare individual who can actually get both. So I recommend giving it a try. Go for the deep level risk in the t decade of the 20s after college and during college. And then after that, uh, in the, from the 30s on, go for the uh, more shallow risks, you know, the aforementioned uh, safe and sound family, job, savings, retirement, etc. Okay, that next is uh, sin and damnation. And the um, uh, sin and damnation suggests that there are, well, in my worldview, there are seven sins. Um, and they lead, <laughs> any and all of them lead to damnation. And these sins are uh, credulity, believing things too easily, falsity, being, being dishonest, uh, hope, you know, wanting things, wanting without coupling that to action, uh, faith, belief that, where belief where the belief itself acts as the evidence to support the belief, which is a circular thing and not nonsensical. Um, dogma, which is believing something because uh, it's in, it, 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 so it is written. <laughs> it's, it's our blessed tradition, etc., etc. And then authority, where we believe something because uh, someone in, in charge told us that that's what we should believe. And then lastly, gossip again. Is, 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 and, and we're damned when we do these things because we wind up living in a damned life. Damned life. <laughs> and easily used. And then after that comes uh, damnation. It comes complete oblivion. Don't pull out. Don't need two of those in one day. Complete oblivion is uh, what happens when we die. And uh, there will be no, recon no reunion with the ones we love. No reconciliation with anybody we left on sour, we parted on sour terms with because there's no reunion, and then uh, for no final justice because there is no God, no justice giver, and no afterlife. So for justice to be applied, so better seek after those things in the here and now while we can through the normal prescribed methods. Next comes uh, the great life adventure, which is one or more big events in life that uh, serve as our centerpiece of our living. 
after that comes, we're putting putting on our faith in motion. See faith. How did faith get to be a virtue? Yeah. And that comes uh, the season of philosophy, which is the time to record our, our what we've learned along the way in life. The trick is to do it while the uh, little voice is speaking in our ear, because the voice tends to quiet up after a while. Next comes uh, season of, after season of philosophy is the uh, bullseye aim. Striving for the mark, but usually missing by a bit. Then the uphill climb. Life is a, a steady climb uphill, up, up, up. Some people like to dig in early or somewhere middle along the way. Dig in and stop climbing and just settle in. That's fine. But uh, for those of us that are so inclined, um, the view is better the higher you go. Seems to be. Lots of th good things to learn and discover. Hmm. Oh, well, fun. And that was the um, up the climb and then arena and utility. Life is an arena for the execution, for the development of our principles and objectives and the uh, use of them so that we can live better. And the next one is nothing is enough. Recognition that uh, sometimes we get by with less. We get by better with less. And then lastly, the principle of fun. Just a reminder to, to have a good time. Doesn't have to be serious stuff all the damn time. <laughs> and that's it. That's my good life meditation. So let's plan for the rest of the day now. Here we are. We're entering, I think this is technically Palm Desert. Uh, and we're gonna, I'll keep the camera on for a little bit. We're about to go into the fancy... Oh, there it is right there. That's the fancy town right there. We just passed it. The fancy pants street. Like the Rodeo Drive. And then after that, well, we're headed towards the uh, desert shores in the Salton Sea, which is not the fancy pants area. I think I'll turn and go back up and we'll drive down the street. I'll keep this camera on for just a little bit longer. Well, maybe I can just sleep, slip in here. Oh, that worked. Highway 111. Be witch. much warmer down here than it was up on the mountain. <laughs> so that street up there, I think I think that's kind of like the Rodeo Drive of this community. Lefty. <laughs> Here we go. Look at art along the street. Jewelry stores, Range Rovers, Porsches, art galleries. store. Golf cart.
All right, well, I think we've got a good taste for all of this, huh? A lumpy bunny a store for kids. The lumpy bunny. Mama Gina. <laughs> Let's just pull over here real quick. And I think that's it for today. <laughs> okay. Thanks for uh, joining me. On this summit, summit of the sands. See you later. Thanks for joining me on the good life. Bye-bye.